Hey folks, uh, welcome to me actually recording something for once. I don't even know if I've recorded anything since I dyed half of my head orange. Like, half orange, half pink. I might have done some Battlefront with it. I know I recorded Doom since I did it, but Doom doesn't have camera. Because it isn't on PC, because I'm recording something on PC for once. Th- that's crazy. I gotta edit those episodes of Doom. Oh, I can sort of hear some music coming through. The one thing about this hairdo is that it doesn't work so well. <laughs> that. Oh dear. Wow. That's um, loud. I'm gonna turn down the. There we go. That's a little nicer. But anyway, Highway Blossoms. I hear this is gay. It was on sale. So I'm gonna play it. Because I like doing that. I also never check start time. Oh, I can see it there. Okay, so. Boop. New game. Getting achievements for all the mundane shit. Oh, look! <laughs> Not at all like a just a drawing sitting inside of a... 3D model. I actually kind of do like it. It's sort of all hodgepodgey sort of aesthetic. I kind I kind of dig it, to be honest. Yeah, it looks a little wonky, but like in a good way. Oh man. All right. All right. I can feel getting into a bit of an atmosphere there. That music. It's nice. I like that music. It's pretty. Is that me? <laughs> Is that me, Nina? I'm gonna assume that's me. The music ends, the cassette clicks to a stop. I've listened to it so many times, I've even memorized the placement of the static from the song's original broadcasts. I'm worried the deck might eventually eat the tape but it never happened to him no matter how many times he played the damn thing, so I'm not too scared. It used to drive me crazy. Every day he played it over and over again. Sure, he would throw on something different after a few loops, but soon enough he'd switch back and the cycle would repeat itself. Sometimes I think he would do it just to mess with me. I would be in the back, in bed, smothering a pillow over my head to block out the music. He would just turn it up louder even during the all-nighters. I was so like him. Even near the end, when we finally had to settle down, he was still pulling that kind of crap. I'd come home from school sometimes, and the police would be at the door because the entire block had called in a noise complaint. He said it was because he was hard of hearing, but I know he did it just to get a rise of the old grouches who lived nearby. I think that was his worst fear, ending up just another bitter sack of bones. So he did everything in his power to be the exact opposite right until the end. Of course, that meant I would always deal with the fallout. Can't imagine why the na- what the neighbors thought. Seeing a little girl go door to door, apologizing because some old man decided it would be funny to put plastic flamingos all over their award-winning lawns. I can't help but smile. Just a little. Even if it does hurt. I take a sip of my coffee. Outside, the heat haze shimmers over the never-ending oceans of sand. So much desert. Even Roswell was just rock, sand, and a few shacks. All alien-themed, of course. Didn't see any UFOs, though. I'm not used to how dry everything is. Even with the AC on high enough to rip off my eyebrows, I'm still all sweaty. I guess that's what happens when you laze around in snowy Colorado for a decade. In that regard, the desert is a nice change of scenery. I don't exactly hate it. But new sights are nice, especially since his health didn't allow him to do a lot of traveling when I was a little girl. I could see myself getting used to this. Well, maybe in another 15 years when I have everything paid off. Ugh, damn it, Amber, snap out of it. You can worry about that later. This isn't your trip. Stop being so selfish. I push the eject button. I take the tape out and look over. Look it over. Probably for the 20th time today. Years where the brown stains and greasy fingerprints are smudged all over, making it feel grimy to the touch. 
Still works like a charm, though. There are more cassettes in the glove compartment, a mixture of mine and his, mostly his. I should just play one of those and get it over with. My hand gravitates toward the latch. It would be okay, right? No. I snatch my hand away from the latch and flip the tape over. Once again, I find myself staring. With a sigh, I stick it back into the deck. I reach towards the play button, taking another look to see if the road is still clear. Like always, it... Uh... <laughs> what the fuck was that? That was awesome. <laughs> Isn't... It... <laughs> I slam the brakes, their shriek piercing my ears. A glance at my rear view mirror shows it a glance at my rear view mirror shows a girl cringing next to an ancient looking car, covering her ears as I screech down the road. Making a U-turn of dubious legality, I pull up in front of her car, killing the motorhome's engine. I hop out and shield my eyes from the blazing New Mexico sun. Only now do I realize how precious AC really is. Doesn't Aw, she's cute. <laughs> It doesn't take more than several steps before the girl comes bouncing up to me with a look of relief. Oh my god! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! I was trying to think no one would ever stop! With each word, she gets a little closer until we're finally within touching distance of each other. Her smiling face now filling my entire field of vision. Her bright auburn hair is done into a girlish side tail, glistening between specks of sweat. Standing out in the heat has made her round, pale cheeks a sun-kissed red, but she still looks put together, like the desert would sooner melt her than do any real damage to her looks. Wow, you're gay as fuck, girl. I like it. I almost feel embarrassed to be in front of somebody who dresses so cute. Her frilly yellow top, but it's green. Her frilly yellow top and skirt putting my red t-shirt and khakis to shame. It's all brought together by one thing, though. Her eyes. They're blue. Vividly blue. Deep and rich, complementing the traces of her misty perfume as she gets closer and closer. That was legitimately the first thing I noticed about this character, too, was that, wow, she's got some blue eyes. They're very blue. I like eyes. Eyes are cool. Both of them have such pretty eyes. Makes me happy. Too close, too close, too close. <laughs> I scramble back and cough, trying to hide away any awkwardness. N n n no problem. What's she doing out here alone? Driving through? Hell, is she even alone? I peer off into the plains on the side of the road, half expecting a guy to pop up from his hiding place now that some idiot has fallen from their tr for their trap. That idiot being me, of course. I like the different screens. I like that it's kind of got some some variety here like even in the first like what it's been several minutes of this there's already like a solid variety in the screens that's really cool but much to my surprise no one does instead the girl continues to stare at me smiling as she patiently waits for my response I glance behind her focusing on her car so what's the issue your car breakdown I think so, yeah. I was driving and it just kind of stopped. Yeah. She lowers her head in shame, eyes fixated on her feet, kicking the dust around her. I'm not much of a car buff, but I can take a look at it. Her head pops back up and life returns to her eyes. Oh, wow, could you? Yeah, I, I can't promise that I can do anything, but I can at least check it out. Oh, that'd be great. All right, first things first, then. Thing, this thing looks even older than my motorhome. It was probably a nice car once upon a time, but with a dented grill, multiple scratches, and faded murky green color, it's hard to believe such a cute girl was driving it. I slide into the fabric seat and start the ignition. Hold up, let me bounce the microphone while I'm trying to get the hair out of my fucking eye. God damn it. I'm always so, like, my whole left arm is always so damn trapped. <laughs> can't do anything with it. <laughs> I should have put this microphone in a better place. The slide of the fabric seat and start the ignition. I don't know too much about how this stuff works, just enough to keep the motor home from giving out. But 
I can't imagine it's too significant of an issue. Probably just a dead battery or... <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> no gas. A single car passes by, cooling us with a refreshing gust of wind sprinkled with dirt and sand. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> honey. Gas? Is something wrong? Is this a choke? Oh no, did I break it? Uh, no, it's just out of gas. What? No way! Dad said I should have filled up before I left. Is she for real? Why is this girl in the middle of nowhere by herself? As if trying to force all the ideas into the center of her brain, the girl grabs her head and whines under her breath. Oh, man, I didn't charge my phone either. What am I gonna do? I'd offer her mine, but I've never had a cell phone in my life. Seems like I had to be pretty absent-minded to forget that, though. She whines once more and turns to me. Hey, this might seem a little weird. Oh no. But could you take me somewhere nearby so I can get some gas? What do you know? She actually did it. How long did you say you've been stuck out here? Um, I don't know. A few hours, maybe? I've been trying to wave down everyone who drives by, but you are the first to stop. Hold on, everyone? Yep. This heat must have fried her brain. Does she have any idea how dangerous that is? It's probably not a good idea, you know. She cocks her head to the side and gives me a look of genuine curiosity. Like it wasn't obvious or something. Huh? Why? Well, you know, a cute young girl alone in the middle of the desert its just asking for trouble. But you're a cute young girl alone in the middle of the desert. What? <laughs> I'm too gay to play these sorts of games. I'm all giggly. Her comeback it takes me off guard and I turn away a little, avoiding eye contact. Yeah, but that's different. A smile returns to her face. The same bright one that showed me she showed me when I first pulled over. I'm still avoiding eye contact, but she leans over to the direction I'm looking and continues to smile. So, do you think you can give me a ride? Uh, I don't know. Please! It shouldn't take very long. This girl. It's like she didn't even listen to what I said. Still, better me than some psycho. Besides, it's not like a small detour will make me late or anything. I guess it's fine. I'm in too big of a... Not in too big of a rush, anyway. Yay! <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> it's so cute. Before I'm even finished, she's springing off to the ground, bouncing into the motorhome. Hey, wait, wait! But it's already far too late, as she somehow made her way into the motorhome before its owner, even finding the time to give me a small wave from the passenger seat. I heave a heavy sigh, rubbing my temple as I climb back up into the driver's seat. The key is still dangling in the ignition. I wrench it around and the motorhome roars to life, forcing a surprised squeak out of the girl. <laughs> Those faces, like, so just like... <laughs> By the way, my name is Marina. Thank you so much for helping me out. Amber. Don't mention it. Careful not to hit her car, I back the RV up and turn it around, sending us in my original direction. <laughs> sunglasses! I put on my sunglasses and reach for the play button on the cassette player, finally giving in to temptation. But Marina starts up again. Why are we going the other way? Wasn't there a station a little ways back? It was a bit more than a little ways back. I saw a sign a few miles ago that said there was a station not too far from here, so we're going there. Oh, wow, I didn't even see that. You're really observant. Yeah, or you're just 
really oblivious. Not really. Silence falls upon the mortar home. Motor home. <laughs> I don't know why Seg said that weird, like, motor home. The roaring of the engine, swishing of the wind from outside being the only sounds. I take that as my cue and reach for the cassette player once more, finally giving... <laughs> Hey, how do you try even drive this thing? It's huge! Marina spreads her arms out like an eagle and furling its wings, almost bopping me on the head in the process. I clear my throat and grab her arm out from the air, gently placing it on her lap. It's not that bad. I get used to it. She tilts her head to the side and gives a light grunt as if saying, That's so? And we return to the silence of before. Again, I reach for the cassette play. So what are you doing out here? Are you going camping? It seems like what you're doing is fun. I take a deep breath and hold on to it as long as possible before letting it out. Just traveling. What about you? Why are you out here? Oh, well, it's kind of silly. She scratches her head and lets out an embarrassed laugh before staring at her feet, quieting down, and surprisingly enough, staying quiet. Well, looks like that worked. I reach for the cassette player one last time. I stop for a moment to look at the glove compartment, and then Marina, who looks lost in thought, before finally pressing play. Boom! Ah! Uh, anyway, uh, this is kind of what I was looking for, so I'm excited. I'm going to keep playing more. I'm going to play more in the next episode. I'm going to keep looking over at Devastator, standing on my desk. He's my son. My son made up of my six smaller sons. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope to catch you next time. See ya. Thank mm -hmm. you.